you've come to the right place. My name is T. Harbecker, and welcome to my web class, Zero to Multimillionaire. I truly appreciate your spending your time with me here today, and my intention is that you not only get a ton, a ton of value, but that your life may actually change. I encourage you to listen very closely and stay to the end. Because by the end of this class, you're going to recognize a lot of things you may be doing that are actually preventing you, preventing you from success. More importantly, you'll know specific strategies to use instead. Strategies that can actually produce real wealth in your life. So I invite you to pay very close attention, almost as if your life depended on it. Because financially, for many of you, it actually does. So if you have your cell phones out or email open or Skype open or anything else around that could distract you, please do yourself a favor and put it away for right now, okay? Now, I'm about to share with you several difference makers, principles that make the difference between getting rich, staying middle class, or being broke. So thank you for doing that. All right. Now, for those of you who don't know me, is it okay if I tell you just a little bit about myself and why you might consider listening? I didn't say believing. I said listening to what I have to say. All right. With all humility, I went from broke, I mean dead broke, and borrowing $2,000 on my credit card to becoming a millionaire in just two and a half years. I did that by opening the largest retail fitness chain in the world. I also founded what was at one point the largest personal success training company in the world. I've marketed over half a billion, that's billion with a B, dollars worth of product. I happen to be the author of the number one New York Times, USA Today, Wall Street Journal best-selling book. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, which has sold over 2 million copies and has in 42 different languages. I currently have well over 2 million students and my courses are being taught in 35 different countries all around the world without, I repeat, without me being there. And most importantly, I never, ever, ever, ever have to work another minute in my life if I don't want to. Sound good? Well, you know what, it's great now, but I can still remember when it wasn't all that great. In fact, I remember when it was a complete disaster. You know, I grew up with parents that came from Europe. They were, they were in the war. So when I was young, I was taught that money means what? Survival. It didn't mean new clothes, new cars, new boat. It meant survival. If you had a lot of money, you might live. If you didn't, you probably died. It was that simple. And I left school after the first year of college because I wasn't a millionaire yet. But over the next 10 years, I went through 14 different jobs and 12 completely different businesses. And I was constantly constantly broke. I remember always having to make a choice between putting $5 of gas uh, in my car or eating dinner that night. And it was a horrendous way to live. And trust me, I tried everything, but I just couldn't create success with anything. And it wasn't like I wasn't trying to learn as well. I mean, I was. I, I read all the books. I listened to all the tapes. I went to all the major seminars, but nothing that they taught seemed to work for me. I ended up having to move back in with my parents and living in their basement because I was broke again. Then by a stroke of luck or the universe or serendipity, I don't know what you want to call it, I met a friend of my father's who was over at our place playing cards. He said that he heard from my dad, of course, that I was broke and I was depressed and I couldn't make a decent living. <laughs> and he gave me some advice that would change my life. He said, listen to these words. If you're not doing as well as you'd like to be, 
All that means is that there's something you don't know. Now, being a brash young man at the time, I thought I knew what? Everything. But obviously, that wasn't the case. So, for a change, I listened. He said, don't you realize that rich people tend to think and do things the same way? He asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, I just wanted to get rich. He asked how. I said, in business. So he said, so why don't you study rich business people and see what they do? And you know what? I didn't have much else going on. So I spent the next six months, and I devoted myself to studying rich business people. And I found out something quite surprising, that they actually did have many, many similarities and principles that they all seem to use, especially, as I said, in business. Next, I borrowed $2,000 on my credit card, and I started another new business, and I put these principles to the test. And all I can tell you for sure is that they worked. I opened the first retail fitness store in the world. And I ended up opening 10 more stores in only two and a half years. And as I said earlier, I became a millionaire. And of, of course, I got myself the car, finally. And I got myself a house, finally. And some decent clothes, finally. And people that I'd known from before, they started asking me, hey, what, what did you do? What happened here? They said, you know, uh, when I knew you, you never had any money. You were always, you know, boring money and bumming rides. And now you're rich. Like, how did this happen? So I began sharing some of the principles that made the difference between when I was broke and when I became comparatively rich. And, you know, these principles seem to really resonate with them because they were making a lot of the same big mistakes that I had made. And the information made a huge difference in their lives, too. And so I continued to learn more and earn more and teach more. And as they say, uh, you know, hindsight is what? 2020. And, and so I can really see the difference between who I was and what I used to think and do when I was broke versus now that I am a multi, 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 multi millionaire. And that's what we are here to do today. To learn some of these critical differences. Because my guess is, that many of you are in the same position that I was. Not necessarily broke, but maybe not as rich as you'd like to be either. Yes or yes. So let's talk about just a few of the lessons that I learned that made the biggest difference for me and I hope will make a big difference for you. Are you ready? All right, let's get to work here. And by the way, if you have a chance to write these down, uh, if you're in a place to do that, which I hope you are, make sure you write these major points down. They will change your life. Every one of them, I promise you. All right, here we go. Number one, own your own business. All right, let me ask you, what's the best way to win a game? Well, there's, there's a lot of answers, but, but here's the best one that I know, make the rules and be able to change the rules whenever you want. Would you agree with that? Remember, I had 12 businesses, but I also had 14 different jobs. So I was really unsure about which way should I go? Should I go the, the job route, you know, more security, less risk, steady paycheck, probably sleep pretty well at night, you know, why not? Or should I go with owning a business? More risk, but definitely more upside. <clears throat> well, after all of these years and all of these trials, I can safely say that for me, it's not even close. And what I actually realized was that I was, I was, and that I am unemployable. I'm unemployable. I went through 14 different jobs before I realized that. You know what? I just cannot work for someone else. Maybe I have a problem with authority, but I am not good with other people telling me what to do, what I can do, what I can't do, when to come, when to go, when to pee, blah, 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 blah. I think you know what I mean. And I don't know about you, but I like to be in charge of my own life. I also, I also like being 
creative and coming up with ideas and being able to implement those ideas without having to get some kind of uh, approval from some higher up or go through an entire political process to get something done. What I especially like about owning your own business is that you have put yourself in a position. Now listen closely. What's the word? Position where creating wealth is at least possible. I want you to think of it this way. Let's say you're playing tennis, okay? And, and, the, and the ball is, the ball comes, uh, it comes way over here, okay? It's over here. Now, now, the first thing you have to do is you've got to get yourself into what? You've got to get yourself into a position to be able to hit the ball. You can't hit a good shot from back over here, right? You can't do that. Same with wealth. You, with wealth, you, you have to give yourself a chance, and your best chance comes with your own business. The research shows that 90% of all self-made millionaires did it in their own business. Why? Because, listen closely now, because of what I call wealth rule number one. Write this down. Here's wealth rule number one. No limits on your income. I repeat, no limits on your income. Here's the problem. If you are in a job or you get paid a set salary or even any situation where you get paid by the hour, that means you are being paid for your what? Your time. And here's the issue. There's only 24 hours in a day for everybody. And since your time is therefore limited, your income is limited and you broke it. You broke it. The most important rule of wealth. Again, no limits on your income. Now, I'm not saying you can't get rich with a job. If you happen to be, you know, the CEO of one of the largest com uh, companies in the country, you know, you can get rich for sure. You know, and it's also possible to become financially free with a job as long as you are a great money manager and a great investor, which of course most people aren't. <laughs> but again, you could get free, but I wouldn't count on getting rich that way. Now, listen closely. None of this is to say that every single person is cut out to own their own business. You know, some people, well, you know what? They're just not built for it. I totally understand that. And, and not that you can't learn, but if somebody really needs a structure that's already there and in place, and they really need constant direction from someone else, and they definitely need security, they prefer security over wealth, then they might truly be better off with a job. And you know what? Good on them. Absolutely no problem. And I wish them all the best. It's just not for me or anyone else who wants to get rich. So bottom line, when I was broke, I was going back and forth, back and forth between job and business and business and job and job and business and business and job. Now that I'm rich, I would never even consider a job. In fact, I'm already semi-retired and I only work once in a while because all my businesses run without me. But I get offered jobs all the time. And, and you can imagine it's for, it's for big, big, big money. And I always say the same thing. No, thank you. I, I have a job allergy. <laughs> you know, I, I start out, I, I start sneezing. I break out in hives. I become depressed, right? <laughs> so thanks for your offer, but uh, I'll tell you what, your business sounds great, and if you're looking to sell it, let's talk. Now, I, I actually don't say I have a job allergy out loud, but it's true. It's true because a job and rich, well, they don't go well together. Let me repeat that. Job and rich do not go well together. But Harp, don't you know that 80% of all new business startups fail in their first three years? Um, yeah, I, I think I've heard that. And, and there's a reason. Those people don't know what they're doing. They're probably doing everything that I did that didn't work. What I know for sure is that there are ways. There are ways to do business that work and ways to do business that do not work. And you have to know the difference. And from my experience and the experience of my students, the results are just the opposite. 80% succeed in their business, good or good. Okay, so let's get to the key lesson here. Broke Harv had jobs. Rich Harv owns businesses. Now, I'd like to offer you something called a declaration. What's the word? 
declaration. And, and that's simply a statement that you make out loud. And what it does is, is it sends a vibration through your body. And that is that vibration is in alignment with what you want to ingrain, okay? So here's the declaration. Listen closely. And I want you to repeat it with me. So listen, here it goes. I own my own business because I choose to be rich. Repeat that with me, please. I own my own business because I choose to be rich. Now, give yourself a high five and say, I'm amazing. All right, good job. Okay. Let's go to principle number two. Here it is, three words. Focus, focus, focus. As I mentioned, I went through 12 different businesses. What I didn't mention was that at one point, I actually had four, how many? Four businesses going at once. I had a line of novelty t-shirts and it was actually going pretty well. Then a friend of mine showed me these unusual hats. They had you know, stuffed animals on them. They had alligators and bulldogs and all kinds of things. They were really fun. And he said, hey, you're already going out visiting all these shops. Why not carry this line of hats and show them too? You're gonna double your income. You know what I said? That sounds good. And I also got into the hat business. Short while later, I discovered this super cool line of jewelry. And I said to myself, hey, I'm already out there on the road. Maybe I can stop into jewelry stores and I can sell this line and I could even earn more income. A few weeks later, another friend showed me what he was doing. He had these, these coupon books that gave people discounts on all sorts of things. You could actually save for real thousands and thousands of dollars and the book only costs 30 bucks. So what do you think I said? Hey, what are the, you know the words, I'm already on the what? On the road and I'm meeting all these new people. I'll just show them the coupon book and now I'll really be making a fortune. And besides, in my mind, something else was going on. I also had the thought that if I had more, by the way, listen closely, see if you relate to this. If I had more than one business, it would be safer. It would be safer, be a backdrop. It would assure me of success because I always had that backup, right? Anybody relate to this? I think so. So, so what was the result of all this? I went from doing pretty decent to being completely broke again. I couldn't understand it. How on earth could more be less? That's because at the time, I didn't understand energy. Bottom line. It takes an enormous amount of energy to get something going, especially at the beginning. Let me give you an example of this. All right. Imagine there's a rocket, a rocket launching, okay? And imagine all the power it takes to get that thing off the ground. You've seen it on TV. It's crazy, right? Obviously, all those thrusters on the bottom, yeah, they've got to be facing in the same direction, especially at the beginning for the rocket to escape Earth's gravity. Yes or yes? Now, imagine for just a moment that one of the thrusters, one of the thrusters facing is actually misaligned. And instead, and instead of facing directly, it's facing outward. Ask you a question. What would happen? The rocket would crash and burn. True or true? Why? Because it takes massive energy, 1,000% focus in one, in one, in how many? One direction for the rocket to launch successfully. Same in your business. It takes everything you've got, every resource, every ounce of energy at your disposal to launch successfully. <laughs> what did Brokarb do? I dissipated my energies. I scattered my resources. I did not focus, and what happened? I crashed. Now, you might be thinking, but hard. If you notice, most rich people, including yourself, have all kinds of things going on. They have several businesses, and they have real estate, and they have stocks. They are diversified. Okay, everyone, let me say this loud and clear. Yes, it's true. Rich people are usually diversified. Once they are rich, 
but you do not, I repeat, do not get rich by being diversified. You get rich by being focused, laser focused. Every single person who became rich did so in one, I repeat, one arena. Bill Gates, uh, was it his current real estate holdings that made him rich? No, it was computer software that made him rich. That's it. Uh, ever hear the name uh, Orville Redenbacher? He made his money in what? Popcorn. That's it. And not popcorn and furniture and landscaping, okay? Just popcorn. And on and on and on and on. And sure, there might be a few exceptions in the world, but trust me, you don't want to be one of them. Why go against the odds? You know what? You also hear people talking about this concept called multiple streams of income. And that's great. But again, later, later, if you are trying to work at two or three or more streams of income at once, you will crash and burn. Besides, why would you want multiple streams of income if it means working multiple times more? Not only does that not work, it you'll be run ragged. So let's change that term to something that makes a lot more sense. What we want is multiple streams of what? Passive income, passive income. And let's start by having one, I repeat, one stream of active income, your business. Your one and only business that you focus 100% on. And yes, sometimes it's appropriate to have your job or even an old business going and then start a new business just part-time because that's the only way you can still keep your income and that's a good thing by the way but as soon as you can you must get back to a single focus all right so what did i do after my four businesses at once fiasco well first i cried <laughs> a lot uh, then i wrote down the lesson and then the day i opened my first retail fitness store i made a solemn vow that I would stay in this one single business until I was either bankrupt or a millionaire. And I attribute my single-minded focus to my success. So, broke hard, broke hard, well, he scattered his energies. Rich Harv is laser focused. Focus is power. Power is the ability to do and therefore succeed. So, Let's do this declaration together. Again, you're making the statement out loud so you can feel the vibration in your body. You know what? What I like to do is I like to put my hand on my heart. I would invite you to do the same if you really want to have the effect of this. Here it is. It's very simple. Three times. I focus, I focus, I focus. Repeat after me. I focus, I focus, I focus. Give yourself a high five and say, I'm amazing. Very good. Okay. Let's go to principle number three. Here it is. Do what you love. Let me repeat it. Do what you love. Now, I remember when I was young, my parents would ask me what I was going to do when I grew up. And I would answer, well, I'm not sure yet, but when I find something I really love, you know, I'll, I'll know it. And they would actually get upset with me. They would scold, Harv, don't be such a princess. Uh, you should do what will make you the most money. Remember, business and enjoyment, well, they're different. You know, during, during the week, you work. And on Saturday night and Sunday, you, you can enjoy your life. That's real life. Get used to it. And, and so I did. I, I, I took their advice and I, I looked for business opportunities that could make me rich. And I was convinced that if I could just find the right business at the right time, I would make millions. In fact, my expertise actually became in finding today's hottest new businesses and I was really good at it. I could actually smell a trend happening. And so I went through business after business thinking the key ingredient was having the right vehicle. The problem was that I kept finding things wrong with that business and I wasn't succeeding. The same business that was working for others, well, that wasn't working for me. And as I mentioned before, I ended up so broke that I had to go back home and move in with my parents again. 
Now, I was living in Florida at that time, and, and they were living in Canada. And I showed up back in Canada smack dab in the middle of winter. And I had been big into fitness myself. I always worked out. I ran. And I used to run between five and eight miles a day along the beach in Florida. But when I got to Canada, first, there was no beach, okay? And second, I could barely walk in the snow, let alone run in it. So I started looking for fitness equipment that I could buy and use in the house. And there was hardly anything. And, and everything that was there was, I got to say, it was pure garbage. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, there might not be any money in this, but maybe I'm going to open some kind of fitness-based business first so I could have some equipment to use myself. And second, maybe I can share my passion and my, my workout knowledge and, and help some other folks get fit. You know, I wasn't thinking about the money. And so was born the original idea of a home fitness retail store. It wasn't because I was sure to make a fortune in this arena. It was because I was totally into it myself. It was my hobby. It was my pastime. I loved being in shape. I loved talking about fitness and exercise. I loved reading about it. I loved everything about it. And it was out of sheer frustration of not succeeding in anything else that was supposed to be a hot business that I was willing to try. I said, what the heck? I'll do this because I like it. And it, it, even if it's only enough to survive, that's okay. At least I'll enjoy it. Of course, as they say, the rest is history. I got rich and I learned a very valuable lesson. The shoe, the shoe has to fit. I repeat, the shoe has to fit. You know, in my live seminars, to prove this point, I often ask the participants to take their shoes off. They don't know what's going on. It's an exercise, right? And then I have them exchange their shoes with the person beside them and then try to walk. And it's unbelievable. It's so hilarious to watch this thing. No one can literally walk more than a few yards without either falling over or sitting back down really quickly because their feet hurt so bad. Then I say, how many of you would be willing to walk in those shoes that you were just had on from the other person for eight hours a day and that knowing that they don't fit you? And they all laugh. They go, of course not. Who would do that? And I answer, you would. All of you who are in a business or even a job that you don't love, you're doing it. So I'm not saying, everybody, that you have to love every single thing about the situation. Nothing is perfect in that way. We all know that. But you have to at least have an interest and hopefully a talent in the arena as a whole. And I don't mean necessarily the technician part. I mean the industry, the field, the arena, as I said. So maybe you're not the greatest golfer in the world yourself, but you love golf. Maybe you love books. Maybe you love fashion. Maybe you love furniture. Maybe you love video gaming. Great. Then that's the arena you should be involved in. Why? First, because you will enjoy your life more. Is that a good reason? I hope so. Okay. Second, because you will have much more success. You're going to have more success because you will have more energy excitement and enthusiasm around this business. And here's something you also might want to write down. Listen closely. Enthusiasm is the greatest sales factor in existence. I'll say that again. Enthusiasm is the greatest sales factor in existence. Enthusiasm is contagious. Your excitement and energy are transferred to your prospective customers or clients, and they are much more prone to buy from you. Another reason you will succeed is because you at least stay with the business. Let me give you an important example. Listen closely here. I want you to imagine that you are driving on a highway and you're, you're looking for an exit, okay? And you're not exactly sure where the exit is, but you're looking for it, okay? Question, what lane do you drive in as you're looking? The fast lane, the express lane, or the slow lane? Of course, you don't want to miss the exit, so you drive in the what? The slow lane. Now imagine 
On the other hand, you know exactly where you're going. You're not planning on getting off this road for a very, very, very long time. No, no exit in your mind, nothing, okay? What lane might you probably drive in? Well, probably the express lane, the fast lane, yes? My friend, when you are in a job or a business that you don't love, you are, listen closely now, subconsciously looking for a way out. You are subconsciously looking for an exit. And to make sure you don't miss it, you end up driving in the what lane? The slow lane. You don't even know you're driving the slow lane, but you are. But when you love what you do, you have no intention of getting off, and so you end up in the fast lane, and you become successful. Does this make sense? Yeah, well, sure, but, but Harv, there are certainly people who make a fortune in fields that, that they don't really like. You know what? I would agree. There's always exceptions to the rule. And you know what? That might happen. But first, it's seldom. Second, in the end, a lot of those people end up, listen closely now, losing their money. Why? Because they get tired of it. They get, they get tired of that business or that situation. And what did I say earlier? Enthusiasm sells. Tired does not. Do you understand? I sure hope so. Okay, so you might ask, well, how do I know what I, what I love? What's my area? How do I know what's right for me? How do I know it's the right fit for me? Here's a simple way of knowing. What are your hobbies? What are the activities that you normally do? What are your interests? What do you do with your spare time? What would you do if you did have spare time? What do you talk about? What do you like to talk about? Here's an exercise that I give my seminar students. So I want to give it to you. I say, and it's at lunchtime, so I say, go out this lunchtime, and for real, I want you to go to a bookstore, and I want you to buy three magazines. And sometimes they do it online. Sometimes they go out well for lunch, and they do it buy three magazines, actually pay for them. You have to pay for them, okay? And they do. And when they come back, I ask them to write down the subjects of those magazines, and I ask them why they bought those magazines. And they answer, because I'm interested in that. And I go, duh, maybe that's a field to consider, good or good. Okay, now, the final clue that I'm gonna give you right now is this one. What are you, naturally talented at. Not so much a learned skill. Why? Because you could have been talked into doing that a long time ago, and maybe it wasn't fully your choice. Maybe your parents had something to do with it, whatever. The guidance counselor, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be a lawyer. Why? Because everyone tells me I should be a lawyer. Do I want to be a lawyer? No, I don't want to be a lawyer. Okay. So what are your natural talents? What are you naturally pretty good at that a lot of others, well, they have, they have some challenges with it. Are you naturally compassionate? Are you naturally a pretty good communicator? Are you a good writer? Are you a good speaker? Do you have an eye for fashion? Do you have a knack for home renovations? Are you good with your hands? Uh, does solving problems in the legal world interest you? Do, you? do you read medical journals or things like that? You know, whatever it is could be a great clue and is a great clue to your passion. Regardless, Brokharv believed that work is work and joy is joy and the two do not go together. Rich Harv now absolutely knows that if you don't do what you love, you will hate your life and go broke. And that following, that natural joy of yours is the only way to true and lasting happiness and, and, and success. So let's do this declaration together. Put your hand on your heart if you feel inclined to do so. I do. And repeat after me. Here we go. I get rich doing what I love. Let's repeat it. Here goes. I get rich doing what I love. Now give yourself a high five and say, I'm amazing. Good job. Okay. Are you ready for principle number what? Four. Here goes. You are the root of your success. I'll repeat it. You are the root of your success. Now, remember I just mentioned that my philosophy earlier was that if I got into the right business at the right time, I was certain to get rich? Well, that led to another major lesson. 
So I had this belief that all I needed was a hot business concept, something that others were killing it in, and then I would too, right? And I tried and I tried, but it wasn't working. You remember that? Yes? Okay. So finally, listen to this. Finally, a friend calls me up from Florida, and he tells me about this new business that he's in, and he's making a fortune, and that I have to jump in on this, and I have to start doing it on the East Coast. I remember uh, leaving this conversation, you know, him leaving it, and he says, Harv, my friend, welcome to the Wealth Club. And I think you know how excited I was. I mean, he hit the right words, right? Finally, all my work, all my studying, all my, I was finally going to pay off. Finally, I was finally going to realize all my dreams. It was going to happen. Okay, fast forward exactly five months later. My friend, he's still killing it, even more. He's making a freaking fortune. And me, I'm losing more and more and more money. It is hemorrhaging, and I'm just about broke again. I couldn't believe it. How could this be? How could I be going bust in the same business that he's making a fortune in? <sighs> I remember standing in front of the mirror, wondering what to do next. And like a ton of bricks, it hit me. I remember saying to myself, right in the mirror, I went, wow, maybe it's not the business. Maybe it's me. I had to take a deep gulp. I was depressed. I was embarrassed. Could it be true? Could it actually be that I was the problem? So I kind of moseyed around for a few days. And at that point in time, I got a call from a very old friend. And the first thing I said to him was, I'm not interested in any business opportunity. Thank you. He laughed and he said, I'm not calling you about that. I'm calling to invite you to a course that I've been doing. It's been really, really great for me. I'm learning a lot about myself. and I think you'd enjoy it. What kind of course? I asked. And he said, uh, it's a personal development course. I looked up to the sky and I said, Harv, you have nothing more to lose. You need something different. And so I went. That was the day my life transformed. It was the first time I really looked in the inner mirror. I examined my thoughts, my beliefs, my character, my habits. And you know what? I have to admit, I did not like what I saw. I saw an angry, frustrated, disappointed, jaded, egotistical young man who thought he knew more than he really knew, as evidenced by his real results in the real world. I saw that my mindset was set for failure instead of success. I saw that my character had huge flaws in it. I saw that my habits were not overly positive and were actually unproductive. And the biggest thing that I saw was that the only, the one and only reason I had not been successful was not because of the businesses that I chose and not because of the suppliers that I had and not because of the partners that I got involved with. It was because of me. Me, me, and me. It was the cause of it all. Me. And I finally understood what I now teach to everyone, that your thoughts lead to your feelings, which lead to your actions, which lead to your results. And I had a case of what's called stinking thinking, but I didn't know it. And it infected my entire world. And I vowed that I would change that and began devoting myself almost full time to working on myself and making the internal changes necessary. And guess what happened? As I grew, my money grew. Let me say that again. As I grew, my money grew. And I realized that your business and money can only grow to the extent that you do. And I realized that you, you are the root, I repeat, the root cause of your success, your mediocrity, or any failure. I realized that for better or for worse, I created my life just as it is, and there is no one 
and nothing else to blame for anything. In short, I finally took full responsibility for my results and my life. And instead of making me feel bad, guess what? I felt free because I finally understood that if I create my life, I can change my life. And I did. And so can you. It all starts and it all ends with you. Who you are, your thoughts, your character, your habits. And this is illustrated really well with a story about my own son, Jesse. You know, he was, he was always a smart kid, but he never fully applied himself in school. I mean, I guess where he got that. <laughs> and, and he did okay, but he never did great. And I remember that he was in his uh, first year of university. And, um, you know, of course, first year, I mean, hey, we got away from home. We wanted to have fun. I mean, that's pretty normal. Uh, too much fun, unfortunately. And his marks showed that. He was barely passing. And I, you know what? I wasn't overly upset about that. But I was concerned about something else, something more important than marks. I was concerned about what was creating those poor marks. So I had a conversation with him. I asked, I said, Jess, what do you want most in your life? And he said, to be successful. I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30, Dad. I said, well, my son, I have some good news and maybe some not so great news. First, the good news. I really believe that you're going to be a millionaire. His face lit up. Then I said, but not for a long, long time. Maybe when you're 50. <laughs> and he said, uh, what, what are you saying? I don't, I don't get it. I said, yeah, I think you're going to be a millionaire when you're around 50. And I could see his disappointment. He actually got a little bit huffy. And he said, Dad, how can you say that? You're usually so encouraging. That is crappy for you to say to me. And I answered, I'm saying it because it's really what I think. And he said, why do you think that? I said, because we are creatures of what? And he knew the answer. And he answered, have it. And then I hit him with the point of an arrow. I said, successful people have successful habits. Unsuccessful people have unsuccessful habits. Which do you think you have? And he said, I don't know. I said, well then, Look at your results. The only field of play that you're in right now is school. And your only scorecard is your marks. And they are crappy. And the problem isn't that your marks aren't good right now. It's that the same habits, the same habits that you have that are creating these poor marks will become lodged in you subconsciously and, and become very, very, very hard to break. Jess, right now, you have the same habits unsuccessful people have, and those habits will stay with you forever unless you do something about it right now. Well, one thing about my son, he's an action taker. He's a doer. And he immediately began taking three nights a week to go to the library where he was away from all his friends and his dorm and everything and do his homework and study. And by the end of the year, guess what? He had a 4.0 grade average and ended up graduating on the dean's list. And now in the business world, he is well on his way to become a millionaire on his own and he's not yet 30. All of this because he changed his mindset, his habits, his character. In short, he worked on and changed himself. Bottom line, for your business to get better, you have to get better. For your money to grow, you have to grow. In short, Brokar believed it was all about getting into the right business. Rich Harv knows it's all about the right you. You are the root of your success. So let's do this declaration together. Hand on your heart. Let's go. I am the root of my success. Repeat after me. I am the root of my success. Now give yourself a high five and say, I'm amazing. Beautiful, great job. Okay, ready for principle number five. Here it goes. To get paid the best, you must be the best. Let me repeat that. To get paid the best, you must be the best. Now, we all know that this principle is true when it comes to sports, right? For the most part, the best players, well, they get paid or earn the most money, right? Well, 
Tiger Woods, the golfer, uh, well, he is or he was the best. He made the most money. Uh, basketball player LeBron James, uh, he's the best pretty well. He makes the most money. The tiniest difference between a baseball player batting an average of 250 versus 300 is the difference between earning a million dollars a year and earning $10 million a year. So we all know that in sports, how good you are at what you do pretty well, not always, but pretty well determines your income. But for some odd reason, we think that in business, hey, this doesn't really matter. You know what? In my live seminars, I often ask people, how good are you at what you do? Not just the being the technician part, but in your, in your business in general. And most people, you know, they, 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 they're not sure. They, they think they're doing pretty good. And then I give them the answer and I scream. The easiest way to know how good you are at what you do is simple. Look at your paycheck. Look at your income. That will tell you for sure. And of course, the room goes dead silent. The fact is, most people have never made being the absolute best in their specific business and in business in general a big priority. So how good is your product or service? How good are you in your specific business and business practices and strategies in general? Um, Malcolm Gladwell, in his best-selling book, Outliers, he looked at the, uh, the commonality among the most successful people in the world. And what he found out uh, was very, very interesting. And what he said was that it took at least, listen closely, at least 10,000 hours of practice to become a master and in each and every arena that he researched. 10,000 hours, meaning people actually trained and practiced and learned for 10,000 hours before their mastery actually set in. So how about you? How many hours do you train in your arena? How many hours do you practice and hone your craft? How many hours do you actually study business and actually learn? You know, Tiger Woods trained for six hours a day. LeBron James practices and watches film for six hours a day. And this is all on top, on top of their actual game playing time. Here's a question. How long does an Olympic athlete have to train before coming in even last place, let alone winning a gold medal? I don't know. Maybe it's what? You think it's six hours a day for, for four or five or six years straight? I'd say probably more. What do you think? Again, how much attention are you giving to becoming the absolute best in your field, in your business, and in business in general? As I teach around the world, you know, uh, students constantly ask me, you know, um, how, how can I become a great trainer? Because, you know, I do training. So they, how can I become a great trainer? Uh, and I know what they usually also mean is a great and rich trainer. <laughs> so I answer, I say, well, take the train the trainer programs. You know, volunteer to assist at the events so that you can see how the business is actually run. And they say, well, well I, don't, I don't really have time to do all that. And I say two words to them. You're broke and you always will be. What I mean is that there's not a chance in heck that these people will ever succeed. Why? Because they are not willing to do what it takes to be great at what they do, let alone be the best at what they do. Funny. A lot of people, when they do the course, and when they do it live, they say, wow, Harv, you know, you're one of, well, you're one of the best trainers on the planet. Okay, thank you. Well, you're naturally gifted. And you know what? It's funny to me because they never ask about the dozens of times that I volunteered and supported other people's programs, that, that I studied accelerated learning techniques for years and years and years and became proficient at it, that I took acting workshops, voice coaching, studied other people's courses, courses that, that when, I, when I, I, I look at and I still take notes at shows and concerts that I attend, when Madonna sits on the, on the, uh, on the step at her show, I I write that down, sit on a step on a show. I mean, I take notes on that. I spend hours, I, I spend hours a day in front of a mirror that I read books on writing and communicating. Do you get it? Do you get it now? How good are you at what you do? How good a business person are you? Here's an easy way again. 
Look at your paycheck. Look at your income. Do you want to be bigger? Do you want to be better? Then be better. In fact, be the best. I'll say it again. Be the best. Broke Harv just winged it and hoped for the best. Rich Harv studies, trains, and practices with the intention to actually be the best in the world. That's right in the world. Now, I'm not saying you have to end up as the best in the world. You may or may not. But if you practice as if you are intending to be the best in the world, you will be great. And you're going to get paid for that. Let's do this declaration together. I am the best in the world at my business. Repeat after me. I am the best in the world at my business. Give yourself a high five and say, I'm amazing. Good job. Okay, we are ready for principle number what? Six. Principle number six. Here it is. Use the ultimate business success formula. Use the ultimate business success formula. All right, so we're going to put all this together now into what I'm calling the ultimate business success formula. Now, I want you to imagine an upside down triangle, okay? Triangle, upside down, point down here, right? And imagine that each point is labeled. So we got R, V, R, V, R, K, R, Y. Let me do that again. R, V, R, K, R, Y. All right. RV, that stands for what? The right vehicle. RK, that stands for the right knowledge. And RY, that stands for the right you. So, for sure you need the right vehicle at the right time. Yes or yes. All right, we know that. And now when we talk about the right knowledge, well, that's broken up into two parts. How many parts? Two parts. First is business specific knowledge, meaning knowledge in your field or your specific industry. So if you sell pies, you know, uh, what do you know about making and selling pies? What's your knowledge there? Second, the second part of it is business in general that we have to know, meaning business practices and strategies that are the same and used in pretty well any and, and all businesses regardless of the field. And of course, there's, as we mentioned before, the right you, the right you. You, you are the base. You are the foundation. You are the glue that holds all this together. Now, here's the thing. You absolutely, what's the word? Absolutely need all of the parts. You miss any one of them and you will struggle. The problem, of course, is that most people aren't just missing one element, they're missing or lacking in all of them, and then, then they wonder why they're not earning what they want to earn. Well, guess what? There, there's, no, there's no wonder, okay? When you, get, when you get all the parts of this formula into place, you will succeed, and you will most likely become rich. It's as simple as that. It seems to me that there's quite a few decent programs out there and courses on, on, you know, on the right you, who you are personal development, and it's a very popular arena. Uh, but it also seems to me that there's not that much street smart, street smart information and knowledge out there on the other two parts, finding the right vehicle and getting the right, the right knowledge, the right, the business knowledge that actually works in the real world. And, uh, and of course, you know, you, you can get a business degree from a school, but if you ask most people, chances are you won't be using much of it in the real world. So let me ask you, are you an expert in marketing, in negotiations, in getting financing, in finding today's hottest new businesses and niches? Are you an expert in systemizing and in duplicating? In short, do you know how to do business in a way that creates wealth instead of just earning a living? And for most people, the answer painfully is no. So what to do? <laughs> Learn it. It's like, like playing piano or golf or tennis. Business is a learnable skill. Nobody comes out of the womb as a business expert. Everybody has to learn how to do it. <clears throat> you know, in my book, uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, I say every master was once a disaster. What does that mean? It means everyone who is great at something now 
Well, they were once terrible at it when they started, but they what? They learned. They learned to succeed. One caveat. If you are going to learn things, you have to make sure that you learn the right things, the things that make the difference between becoming rich and staying broke. The difference between having a successful, thriving business and struggling. And that's why I created a program called Million Dollar Business Secrets. How to create wealth in any business you choose in three years or less. Again, if, if you just want to earn a living, you know, I love you. But I got to tell you, you're better off learning from somebody else because we're not a fit. But if you want to actually create wealth in your life and you are willing to do what it takes, then this is the only, I repeat, the only program I know of that is specifically designed to teach you step by step by step how to create actual wealth in your own business. So I have a simple philosophy. If you're going to work hard anyways, you might as well get rich and the quicker the better. And if that resonates with you, then this program is going to be a life changer. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to explain just a little bit about what you're going to learn. And then I have a very, very, very special opportunity for you at the end. And if you said yes, then good for you because your life is about to get a whole lot better. That, my friends, is a promise. All right, so here's just some of what you're gonna learn in the program. Listen closely now. The program has four, how many? Four parts to it, each of which could actually be its own seminar. But since you definitely need all four parts, we just put them together into one program. The first part is called Guerrilla Wealth Tactics. Here, you will learn exactly how to turn your business into an automatic money machine and set yourself up for a lifetime of passive income. You're gonna also learn a step-by-step -step method to sell your business if you choose to for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Next, you're gonna learn my street smart financing methods. How to get the startup or operating capital that you need whenever you need it. I'll show you how I've raised 50,000 to half a million dollars over and over again without asking anybody to finance anything. In addition, I'll teach you how to actually make money while you're raising money. I promise you, you're going to be blown away when you hear this. In this section, you're also going to learn a single move, one move that is absolutely proven to be the fastest and simplest way to double, triple, or even quadruple your income and your profits in business. One move. Plus, you're going to learn dozens of other guerrilla business tactics and street smart shortcuts that will make you rich quickly. All right. The next part of Million Dollar Business Secrets is called Secrets of Negotiations. Here, you're going to learn the secrets of street smart negotiation. These are strategies that work in the real world and will save and make you tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in business and in everyday life and shopping stuff. Uh, let me give you an example here. Um, my assistant, she was dealing with a hotel, doing live seminars, dealing with a hotel in Huntington Beach, California. And they quoted her $24,000 a day for the conference room. And it was going to be $16 a day per car for parking, okay? She told me the prices and I go, wow, that's extreme. I got involved. And I kid you not, by the time, by the time uh, I was done with it, <laughs> we got the room not for $24,000, we got it for $6,000. And instead of $16 a day for parking, our students got it for only $4 a day. Now, my assistant dealt with these people for two weeks and probably was on the phone with them for a total of over three hours. You know how long I was on the phone with these people? Six minutes. I kid you not, six minutes. And all I used was an amazing seven-word strategy that you're going to learn in this program. You know, People don't realize that in business, you're always negotiating. And if you are a poor negotiator, you're going to spend a fortune more than you have to. 
And if you're a good negotiator, you're going to save a fortune. And all that money goes right into your pocket, all right? And if you're a great negotiator, you're going to make a fortune. Negotiation is a critical, critical skill, but it is very learnable. In Million Dollar Business Secrets, you're going to learn the 14, 14 most powerful, most effective, most enlightened negotiation techniques in existence. And I say enlightened because when I teach this part live, I usually have all the participants raise their hand and agree, agree that they will only use these techniques for the good, never to harm others, only to create win-win arrangements where both parties are happy. And you know what? If you're going to be getting this program, I would like to assume and ask you to agree to the same thing. Okay? Fair enough? I hope so. Okay. Next, in our seminars, it's I always hours. ask this question. What business are you in? And people always call out real estate, uh, computers, travel, massage, accounting, uh, dog walking, you know, whatever it is, right? And, and then I, I, I yell out, guess what? You are all in only one business. You are in the business of marketing. You are all in the marketing business offering XYZ product or service. And this is the same if you're in a job. You are marketing your services to your employer. You know, <clears throat> Howard Ruff, one of the wealthiest people in history said this. He said, if I could teach my children only one thing, it would be the skill of marketing. For with that skill, they could be successful in anything they chose. So this third part of Million Dollar Business Secrets is dedicated to teaching you the ultimate marketing strategy where you will learn a step-by-step -step system to become, listen closely now, a marketing genius in one and a half hours flat. Again, I'm not kidding you. You could spend a lifetime trying to become a good marketer or you can listen to this part of the program. For in it, I will teach you exactly how I've brought in not thousands and not hundreds of thousands and not millions and not even tens of millions, but hundreds of millions of dollars. And you know what? It's not complicated. It's simple. And that's why it works. It works for any business anywhere. And it will work for you. And you will be able to utilize it in your business the minute you finish learning it. And all I can tell you is that this is one of the keys to my riches. Good or good. Okay. The fourth part of the course is called how to generate million dollar ideas every 60 seconds. Here you're going to learn to find and create dozens of sizzling hot business opportunities, any of which will make you rich. Again, this strategy works anytime, anywhere, any industry, any economy. Remember the importance of the right vehicle. Remember that, right? Right vehicle at the right time. People, you have to understand this, guys. People are getting rich right now offering new high demand products and services that are booming right now. And the idea is for you to cash in and make these boom for you too. And by the end of this part, you will be a true master. What's the word? Master in developing brand new million dollar ideas for a new business or for your current business. And like I said, you'll be able to do this every minute, every 60, how many? 60 seconds if you choose to. It is a system. It is a what? A system. It is a template that you actually follow. And when you hear, this is what's funny, <clears throat> when you hear people complain that everything under the sun has been done already or there's no more good ideas, you'll actually, like myself, burst out laughing because while they see nothing, you see nothing but opportunity. There's only a handful of people on this planet who have the skill that we're talking about. And you know what? You're going to be one of them. And it's going to earn you a fortune. Again, it has for me, and I'd love to pass this rare gift on to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> who's the program for? Um, well, if you're in any business right now, uh, full-time or part-time, then 
million dollar business secrets is a mess. Why would you want to struggle, especially forever? Uh, if you're in a personal service business, a, a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, a, an accountant, a plumber, a, an electrician, uh, you know, a, a real estate agent, a massage therapist, um, a healer, a teacher, a coach, a consultant, or any business where you personally must be there for the value to be delivered, or any situation where you get paid by the hour or for your time in any way, shape, or form, Million Dollar Business Secrets is going to be critical for you. Why? Because for most of you, uh, you don't really own a business. You actually own a job. And you work for the world's worst boss, yourself. And I actually feel compassion for you because you've set your business up to where you have to be there. And again, because your time is limited, guess what? Your income is also limited. I'm going to show you exactly how to rearrange your business so you can not only become rich, but become free. If you're not in business now, but you would like to be someday, the Million Dollar Business Secrets, again, is an absolute must. Have you heard this saying that, well, you know, you, you shouldn't expect to make a profit in business for the first three years. Here's my thoughts on that. Ridiculous! We will show you, I'm gonna show you how to start your business running instead of crawling and how to make a fortune in your first month. You heard me right, the first month. By the way, if you're in a job now and you're not sure if you really wanna own your own business, everything you learn from this program is going to make you a hundred times more valuable in your job and bring you fast promotions and big raises. As um, Best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki puts it. He says this. He says, if you're in business and you're not earning at least a quarter million dollars a year net, there's some things you don't know. I say, if you're not earning at least a million dollars a year, let me repeat that, a million dollars a year, you are wasting your precious time and your life energy. The goal of Million Dollar Business Secrets is for you to learn to earn a minimum of a million dollars a year. And again, for those that, that don't know me, um, I've been known to earn that in a single weekend. So I think I might have something to share with you in this arena, yes or yes. All right, so when and where is the program? Well, the program is online and it can be accessed as soon as you enroll. No travel fees, no hotel fees, no extra expenses. And you can start as soon as we get off this call. Okay, so what's the tuition? Well, do you know how much it costs to get a Harvard business degree? It costs actually $250,000 plus room and board and all your other expenses. And what does it do? It teaches you exactly how to get a 70 or maybe $80,000 a year job. Whereas the Million Dollar Business Secrets Program will teach you step by step by step how to create real wealth in your own business and get you free for the rest of your life. Now, the normal tuition is $997 for all four parts, and it's easily worth 10 times or more than that. You know what? I realize that for some of you, almost $1,000 is still a lot of money, no matter what it's going to do for you. I realize that because, you, you know, remember, I, I was there. I know what it feels like to struggle financially, and I know what it's like to, to just be doing okay, but not have anything for any extra. It's rough. That's why I feel it is my duty, my dharma, to teach you how to create wealth. Because you know what? Business is way too hard to just earn a living. Again, if you're gonna work hard anyways, you might as well get rich, and I think rich is good. Let me repeat that again. I think rich is good, not only for yourself, but I believe this, that if you have the wherewithal to get rich, it is your duty, it is your duty to do so. Why? So that you can help the people who will never, I repeat, never have that wherewithal. And if you get this program, you will have the wherewithal. And definitely, the more you have, 
the more you can give to others. And, and there's a lot of people in the world that could use your help. I, I hope you agree with that. Because sharing this knowledge is part of my mission. If you are willing to do whatever it takes to register, I am going to do what it takes to help make sure every single one of you that's listening right now can get it. So I want to do something very, very, very special. And if you register right now, your special tuition is not $997. It'll only be $249. That's right, only $249. So to register, click the button or the link right below this video. I'm going to even allow you to, to take 30 days, a full 30 days, to go through the entire program. And if you don't 100% agree that Million Dollar Business Secrets delivers strategies that will enable you to earn a million dollars in three years or less, simply contact our office. We'll refund every penny of your investment, no questions asked. And I'm, you know what? I'm not going to stop there. If you register right now, I'm also going to give you some awesome bonuses. First, you'll get access to my 90-minute live Tough Love Mentoring Call. Here, you can ask me your biggest question or get advice on your number one life challenge. Or you can just sit back and listen and learn from other people's experience in the hot seat. Now, this is raw. It's unplugged. It's not scripted. <laughs> and I can tell you this. One call, one call can completely change your life. Next, we've crafted a set of declarations you can read every day to make sure that you implement what you learn from the program. So if you register today, you'll get your own Million Dollar Business Secrets Declaration screensaver to have up on your computer. And finally, you're going to get a professionally designed Million Dollar Business Secrets workbook. This workbook will help you follow along with the exercises given in the program, and it's the ideal place to write down your key points and your biggest learnings. You're going to return to it again and again and again and again as you grow your business. How do I know that? Because students tell me all over the world. So there you have it. You get all four parts. Guerrilla Wealth Tactics, Secrets of Negotiations, The Ultimate Marketing Strategy, and How to Generate Million Dollar Ideas. You get all the bonuses. My Tough Love Mentoring Call, A Declaration Screensaver, The Million Dollar Business Secrets Workbook, all for only $249 if you register today. Again, all you have to do is click the button or link right below this video. Now, whatever you choose, I totally appreciate your time being in this class and even if this is the only thing you do i honor your willingness to learn and for those of you who are registering for the million dollar business secrets program congratulations you are going to love the program and the bonuses and you're going to love watching your revenue your profit and your lifestyle skyrocket once again it's been my honor to be of service to you. And I look forward to working with you in the Million Dollar Business Secrets Program. Bless you all and goodbye for now.